Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's Matt, a photographer based in Northern California. And today we're gonna to be talking about printing photos. Specifically, I'll be printing a landscape photo from Yosemite and a wildlife photo, Atlantic puffins from Maine. And I'll be printing those on two different types of paper using the Canon ProGraph 300 printer, which can print 13 by 19 inch images which is this size right here. Not too big, not too small. This has been my workhorse printer for the past year. I've been printing for commercial purposes, selling these images and making these professional prints and shipping them out to customers. So I've been really happy with this printer and I wanted to show you how it's done and really how easy it can be to make your own prints at home uh, using a printer like this and using the software that's readily available. So without further ado, we'll hop into Lightroom and I wanna first talk about paper choice because that impacts how we edit our photos in Lightroom. Now, I'll be printing on these two types of paper right now. Um, this is uh, both Canon products. There's a Canon Pro Paper Plus semi-gloss and a Canon Premium Fine Art Smooth Paper. Now, when it comes to paper, uh, every paper is different, every manufacturer is different, and I just chose Canon because I had the Canon printer and I was shooting a Canon camera at the time when I got the printer, though I'm not anymore, and I just thought being in the ecosystem might make it a little bit easier to get the images that I wanted as painlessly as possible. Not sure if that's really true, but that was my rationale at the time. I then started using this paper with the printer and I was really happy with the results and I figured if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I say that all to say, I'm not partial to Canon paper. I think you gotta try different types. There's sampler packs for different manufacturers and have fun like just printing the same image on 10 different types of paper and see which one that you like most. But I do wanna stress that each paper type, even within Canon, of course, each paper produces a very different final image. And you can take the same photo and you can print it on a semi-gloss or a art matte paper, and it will look totally different. In this case, with these two papers, semi-gloss has more contrast, the, de the blacks are deeper, and it has a little bit more sharpness to the image. But the downside, in my opinion, it's a downside, is it reflects light because it's a gloss. So semi-gloss is kind of this in-between, between like luster or high-gloss paper and matte paper, M-A-T-T-E paper, which is no gloss at all. Um, and semi-gloss is kind of in the middle of that. So it's a compromise in a sense, but it's, um, I think, a really nice uh, paper for wildlife photos where you want the detail and the contrast because you're capturing like an image of a wild animal. When it comes to landscape photos, I prefer to have more of the texture and the feel than I do the contrast and the detail. And that's why I use a different type of paper, which is a matte paper, which doesn't reflect light at all. So if you hold that up to the light, as we'll see when I show you the final images, it won't reflect the light at all, and it'll just maintain a kind of consistent image that has a nice aesthetic and a little bit of texture to the paper. And so these papers are the ones I've chosen, but you know, do your own research and choose whatever papers you want. Uh, but I think the Canon papers are a nice place to start. It's very easy because all the profiles are built into the Canon software, so it makes it a little bit easier. So with that aside, let's jump into Lightroom and talk about soft proofing because paper choice has a lot of, uh, as a, is mainly what we're soft proofing for when we're doing it in Lightroom. Okay, so this is the first image that I'm gonna print. This is the image from Yosemite that I mentioned. Uh, this particular day was awesome. It was after the, the spring melt had started, so the, all, the, all the snowpack, it was a pretty heavy snowpack the previous year, and it was all melting and creating these uh, lakes, really, of the rivers. And so in this particular case, uh, the river was dammed at some point, I think maybe just from debris, and so it flooded and just had this like reflecting pool quality. And so I, I happened to be there on this early morning and was walking along the river and saw this scene and just kind of lost it and just had a blast photographing it. But you can see the reflection of Yosemite Falls with the uh, really very still water in the foreground. So that's the image for you. Um, I'm gonna print this on a matte paper. Uh, as I mentioned, I prefer that for the landscape images. But first I wanted to show you this concept of soft proofing. So you can activate soft proofing by pushing the button here, soft proofing, or pushing the letter S on your keyboard. And you'll notice that the background will change from gray to white if you have the standard settings. What is soft proofing? Well, soft proofing is just a Lightroom-based virtual uh, 
um, image, really, of what our photo will look like when printed based on the characteristics of the printer that you've chosen and the paper that you've chosen and, of course, your original image. Um, so it allows us to see what the image might kind of look like when printed. I don't think it's that precise, but it is enough of um, a tool that it can show you the differences of different types of paper. And so I wanted to kind of illustrate the point I made before about contrast and texture and all that kind of stuff when I show you the different types of paper. So we're in soft proofing here. So in the right side here, you can see I've got a couple profiles. I've got a profile for the semi-gloss paper I mentioned. So it has the Canon Pro 300, the printer, and it's factoring in the printer and the particular paper, which is the semi-gloss. And then I also have the premium fine art smooth paper. And I have a third one that I'm not gonna talk about today, but I, I got a roll of and I use occasionally as well. So what this is allowing us to do is toggle between different papers to see how it will look in the, um, in the, in the representation of the image. Now, um, these profiles are not standard in Lightroom. So when you get paper, whatever it is, Canon paper, whatever other brand, you wanna to go to the website, the manufacturer, and you wanna type in ICC profile for that particular paper. So ICC profile for fine art smooth, ICC profile for photo plus, photo paper plus semi-gloss or whatever the name is of that paper. That's gonna give you a profile. It's a file, you download it and you load into Lightroom. Just Google how to do that, it's very straightforward. And that's gonna allow Lightroom to uh, show you what your image is gonna look like. Uh, so that's an important first step uh, based on whatever paper you do choose to use. So here we're looking at the semi-gloss paper. And I think the thing to note here is I'm gonna toggle between the digital file, just the edited image that I would share on social media, and the soft-proofed image. So this is soft-proofed, and this is the edited image. So this is the digital file, this is the soft-proof this is the digital file, this is the soft proof. Not much of a difference. And that was my point before, which is that I think the semi-gloss paper does a really good job of just simply producing a print that looks just like your digital file or thereabouts. Um, if we switch instead to the fine art smooth paper, this is the matte paper, you'll see right off the bat, pretty different. Edit file and the fine art smooth file, pretty different, right? So we see those differences that are coming through in the way that Lightroom is showing the photo. The other thing I wanted to mention is the intent. This is the color intent, perceptual and relative. These are two options you have. Perceptual, these will be options when we go into Canon software for how we print the image. Perceptual is basically trying to just preserve all the detail in the color but it may do it at the, at the expense of changing the colors a little bit, sort of shifting the color. Relative color metric, which is this one, will preserve the accuracy of your original edit, but you might have certain colors that are out of gamut. This is kind of akin to like clipping highlights or shadows in a digital file. And so in that case, you might have just the printer not able to create the color that your image had. And in those cases, you're gonna end up with a color that's like off, or you might end up with no color if it's white or black, and it might just be the extreme white or black with no, with no detail at all. So that's just something to keep in mind. I tend to use relative color metric. You will have to choose one or the other. And I use relative color metric for landscape photos generally and perceptual for wildlife photos. Based on how Lightroom is visualizing these images as a soft proof, you could make further edits to your image. And that's really the point of it, is you might want to tweak, maybe increase the contrast if, the, if you want more contrast in the um, less contrasty paper, for example. Or you might wanna edit your colors or the brightness of the colors, luminance. Um, you might edit that down if it's out of gamut, for example. Once you've kind of got the image, how you want it for the particular paper that you have, you want to export the file. Now you could export it as a JPEG like you would normally, but a JPEG is compressed and you're losing some of the detail and you're introducing compression artifacts. So instead of that, I would recommend exporting a TIFF file. This is an uncompressed file and that can be used to import into the CAN software to make your print. So here we're going to go to file, we're going to go to export and we're going to go down here and we're going to select TIFF and 16-bit uh, because it's more bits than eight. And then um, 
300. So change your resolution if it's not already 300 to 300 pixels per inch. Um, and in this case, I'm sharpening for matte paper, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be printing landscape on matte paper, and then you click export. And that's, I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again, but that's what it would export. So that's the process in Lightroom of soft proofing and exporting the TIFF. Next, we're gonna pull that into CAN software and make the print. All right, so we select Canon's professional print and layout software. You would download that if you don't already have it. And the way this is designed is to go top down of the menu on the right. So we're gonna be using, if you had more printers, you might have more than one here. I have the Canon Pro 300. We're gonna be doing a single image. And then I choose the media type. Now, if you have a Canon paper, Canon media, it's gonna already be populated in the, um, in the, in the file uh, schema here. If you have another uh, media type, like I do have this other paper, um, th then you would just have to select a media type that kind of approximates it to get the process going. But you're gonna be basing everything off the ICC profile at the end of the day and manually feeding the paper into the printer. So it's not as relevant. But here we're choosing a fine art paper and we're choosing fine art smooth. That's the paper I'm gonna be printing on for today for this landscape image. So one thing I wanted to point out is that these um, print settings are all auto-populating with options based on the paper um, that Canon already knows about. So in this case, if we select semi-gloss instead of um, the art smooth, and we select top feed instead of manual feed, and we look at paper sizes, we can find like a five by seven inch print, which I've done before for my son. But if we were to switch this to the Fine Art Smooth Paper, which is the one I'm going to be using, you'll see here there is no 5 by 7 inch print because that paper doesn't exist in Fine Art Smooth. So um, if you are looking for a particular paper size that isn't available, it's probably because you chose the media type, that you, you know, a different media type than you're using, or you chose a paper source top feed versus manual feed that's different from the one that you're using. For the smaller images or the smaller uh, print sizes, you're gonna always use the top feed, which is the one that's like built in and not the manual one. That's because of, it makes kind of, it does make sense. It's like designed differently to take the smaller photos or smaller uh, print media. So anyway, so we're using Fine Art Smooth. We're gonna be using A3 Plus. That's the size, that's 13 by 16 by 19. I'm going to have a border, so I'm not selecting borderless. If you did want to print the entire size of the print, then you choose borderless here. It's going to default to the manual tray. It's going to force us into that because that's the only option for this uh, weight paper. Um, it's a higher weight paper. Uh, you could choose a lower quality. Um, I'm not sure it makes that much of a difference, but I always go highest anyway because, I mean, we're here to make good prints. And then uh, I use auto for the clear coating. I use contrast reproduction and depth information. Um, I'm not sure how much of a difference the depth piece does make, but uh, I select it anyway. And then you can select here the alignment and your positioning and whatnot. Uh, which will, which will, you can see here, it'll toggle like um, where the print space is. Um, so if you type in here, like the size you want to be like 11, you know, or 12 here, you know, it'll expand out to 12, or you can change, um, you can change this here to be a margin option, and that will give you like the margin, you know, for your print, um, which will be like the margins on the side. So how much of a margin or how much of a, you know, white space you want around your print. I don't actually like to use it that way. What I do instead is I select the print, which is this area here where I'm gonna put the file, and I select size. And I like to, I'm printing typically a, a 12 by 18 size because I want there to be, I want it to fit in a 12 by 18 mat. Um, and I want there to be a little bit of a lip left over on the 13 by 19 inch paper to tape into the frame into the mat. So what I do is I click size here and I select a um, custom size. So I, I make one here. So I, I kind of defaulted this to what it would look like for you, but so it's 12 by 18. So we're gonna type in 12 by 18 and now that's an option. So I'm going to select 12 by 18 and you can see it's gonna do the border it needs to hit a 12 by 18 inch image. The reason why I do that as opposed to messing with the margins is because if you look at the actual, on here it says 13 by 19, so you should get to that 
marg a 12 by 18 if you did a half inch margin on all dimensions. But the truth is it's not actually 13 by 19. It's like, you can look up here, it's 12.953 by 19.016. And because it's a little bit off, you'll get um, a little bit different than a 12 by 18 if you just do it based on the margin. So that's why instead I do it based on the print size and how much space the print's taking up. And I let the margins float based on what, they, what the software needs to make the print size that I want. Okay, so then the rest of it is really easy. You just go in to you go into the spot where you saved it. So in my case, I put it in print collection and I have the print right here and you just drag it in and drop it into the space and there you go. Now it's gonna do its own soft proofing. So you can see it's already soft proofing here based on um, the ICC profile and the paper I chose. So it's kind of the same process that we did before, but of course it's not that easy to edit here in um, in the professional print software as opposed to editing in Lightroom. So that's why I prefer to do the editing in Lightroom. Um, now, if you did wanna tweak it in this software, you can select this set of settings here called color settings. And this allows you to apply a curve or shift the color balance or the brightness and contrast inside the Canon software. You could do that if you want to. Uh, I tend to wanna to do those types of edits in Lightroom instead. So that's the process. And then we would just select print and that will send it to the printer if you've connected your printer to your computer. Now it'll come up sometimes with a note it says the selected paper size does not have wide margins. If you continue printing, you may have a problem. I have not had an issue with that. Uh, when I print with a half inch border on 13 by 19 inch paper. So I just select okay and go with it. And it has never been a problem for me. And then it will open up this dialogue and it will just confirm for you. Are you sure you want to do this? Do you want to print that particular paper, that media, that ICC profile, and the particular rendering intent uh, that you're choosing? So I'm cool with all of that. So I select OK, and it's going to send it to the printer. And now we're going to head over to the printer. We're going to add the paper in there, and um, we're going to see what the print looks like. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention um, that's really important, particularly for matte paper. Um, on photo gloss paper like this, you will have one side that's glossy and one side they'll say like, you know, Canon photo paper or something like that. We've probably all received paper like that when we get it from a printer or if you used to make prints, um, you know, from film or something like that. Uh, one side would say like Kodak Endura or whatever. That is not the case for matte paper. At least it's definitely not the case for this particular Canon paper. So the paper is just blank on both sides. You don't know which side is necessarily the printing side. That's important because one side is coated with a, uh, a coating that allows it to accept the ink and the other side is not. And your prints will not look good if you print on the wrong side. I've done that. I didn't realize it at the beginning. So don't make the same mistake I did. There's a, there's a little like, thing here, I don't know if you can see it. And it says printing side, and it says printing side in like 10 different languages. That's the side you want to be printing ink on. If you do, for some reason, mix this up, say you take the paper out, you're excited, and you lose track of what's what, there's a little trick. Wet your fingers, your pointer finger and your thumb finger, and pinch the corner of some place where you're not gonna be printing, so the corner of the paper. The side that has the coating will stick a little bit more than the side that doesn't. And so you can tell which side has the coating by tapping it and feeling which side sticks a little bit more to your finger, as long as you wet your finger a little bit. Um, don't do that in the middle of the print because you don't wanna mess up your print by putting oil or saliva on your print. But if you have to on the corner, it can tell you which side has the coating. And that is really important for making prints on matte paper. All right, so we're gonna grab a sheet here from the one that says printing side, we're gonna remember which side it is. This side is the printing side. And you're gonna come with me. We're gonna head on over here to the printer. Where mine is set up here. And we're gonna put it in to the manual feed in the back. And it should kind of, if you push it evenly on both sides, you'll push it in. And right when it taps these little sensors, 
inside, it will pop up here and you'll know that the paper is loaded in the manual feed and it will ask you to specify which paper. So here it's got Fine Art Smooth already and we're gonna switch it to A3+, Plus, which is the size here, and we're gonna register and it's gonna detect if it's the same paper. I don't know how it does that. It's really cool that it can detect it. Then it will say, Printing will start from the manual feed tray, load a sheet of paper in the manual feed tray. We have already done that. We are good to go. We're gonna push start print. All right, and that is it. So we got two prints to share. This is the first one here. This is the heavier paper, the um, art paper, and it's got this heft to it that is really nice when you have it in your hand. And uh, you can see the level of detail is really nice. The color is really nice. Um, yeah, like I just feel like it turns out really, really well. Um, as you kind of angle the print, you know, to point I mean, before about gloss, you do not have any uh, like glossy patches or reflection of light. It just absorbs the light that you put on it, which is really nice. It feels um, premium in the sense that it's like printed on cloth. That's really how I would describe it. Um, so that's the benefit to this type of paper and the details there. So if you you know, look at the paper, at the print here, you can see the detail on the trees is really nice. Um, I'm just in the minimum focus distance of the lens, but really nice detail on the trees, really nice color came out. And uh, yeah, just a nice print, nice print to sell, a nice print to ship, and a nice product to put in front of your customer. So really happy with how the printer performed here and the print that came out of it with the paper that I used. So with that, I will move on to the next print, which is this puffin print. Now we didn't go into too much detail on the preparation for this print, but I uh, didn't want this video to go even longer than it already is. But uh, you can see right off the bat, the glare here in the um, reflection of light. So as I move the light around, it's going to reflect light back because it's the semi-gloss paper. That's the downside to this paper. It's also a little bit lighter. It doesn't feel as premium. It feels more like photo, pa photo paper and not like uh, cloth, but when you pull the print up and you look at it um, in detail, it is, uh, it's really nice. I mean, look at the level of detail you're getting out of this print. Um, it looks to me, it just looks like a digital file. It looks like you're looking on your computer. And I think that's really the appeal to this type of paper. You can see the little individual hairs in the print. I mean, look at that detail, and the, the, the hairs or the feathers of the, of the puffin. So uh, that's why I like this paper for the color reproduction, the contrast and the detail. I think that's really nice for prints of wildlife where you want that particular detail. All right, well, I just wanna wrap up this very long video on the Canon ProGraph 300 and what it's capable of with different types of paper. Uh, hopefully that helps you and helps elucidate uh, your, your options as far as paper and printer type. I'm really happy with this printer. If I had one complaint, it's just not large enough. 13 by 19 is wonderful. It's a good size for shipments. I have no problem shipping in a large envelope uh, safely. I don't have to roll the paper or anything like that. But the downside is the size is just not quite large enough. I'd like to be able to print 16 by 20 or even larger than that. And so it wouldn't surprise me if I end up upgrading sometime in the future. But this printer has well beyond paid for itself in terms of revenue coming in and uh, and so I can be happier. I think it's a really premium professional product and there's no problem with it as long as you're comfortable with the size. So with that, I'll finish up and I will see you in the next video. Bye.